Hello, my co-highs. Hope you're all doing well. I am your host, Terena Senpai, and welcome to another episode of Prehistoric Kingdoms Be Built. And today, we are building the Katara Domptosaurus enclosure. So, yeah, I kind of mentioned that we do, we'd be doing this build in the previous episode, so today's no different. And, and of course, we're going to be starting off by building the walls of the enclosure, as we typically do. I'm trying my best to make sure that the fence lines up nicely with the path. And I did want to try to incorporate the lake into this design, but honestly, I had no workaround for it. So I decided, you know, I'd probably best to just get rid of it. Uh, shockingly, Kakar Dinosaur doesn't need that much space, even as a mega theropod dinosaur. Uh, I, I guess it only needs like, a, what, 2,000 square meters, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. And now you can see I'm just fiddling around with the terrain tool, trying to get it flat, because for some reason, path doesn't flatten the ground. It's, a, it's weird. And when it's not flattened, you get weird terrain-looking uh, visuals like that, where it just looks like a sharp incline, which is something I really don't like. Please, devs. Allow the path to flatten, please. Like, uh, we have options to flatten when, when we have modular pieces and stuff. Why not have the option to make a uh, path flatten if we wanted to? Now, for this build, I wanted to incorporate a new kind of viewing gallery. In which case, this is going to be a bridge. A functioning bridge that will cross through the water and look into the car card on the source code, as well as whatever tents I add along the sides. So this initial test run, it, it looked fine. Problem is, I had to get underneath it. So I had to lift the bridge up. But like, I think there was a couple of tests, because like, when I do these builds, I test to make sure that it works properly in the specific zone I'm working in. And one of the obstacles I had to face was the fact that um, you couldn't build a fence around already uh, made terrain. Like, you wouldn't be able to put water and such in there. So I had to make sure that I deleted the fence as best as I could while I was making this build. So that way, when I put the fence back in, uh, I wouldn't be having to deal with trying to put the water back. And so I'm making this into a sort of a bridge that the guests can walk into. And of course, I, there will be the invisible fence over here that will be acting as a invisible barrier. For some reason, I really struggle to get the fence to attach. And I think it's because uh, the invisible fence was trying to get to the further side of fence like it wasn't attached to the closest one it was attaching to the one that had the most length for some reason and once that was done it was time to build up the wall which would be these concrete pil uh concrete brick pillars and glass walls for the guests to view the car car dinosaurs from uh the roof was a bit of a more challenging uh choice i ended up start like using the concrete sort of look but i just really didn't like how weird it was so i ended up changing it into the terracotta and this turned out to be the better one in my opinion i wish it it it, it, it um reached out to the uh brick pillars but hey ho it works just fine as it is uh and of course i'm gonna place down a couple more of these in hindsight, I probably should have waited uh, to put the path down before I did this. So that way there could be water going underneath that one as well. But, oh well. And I'm doing this three times. So, you know, there are multiple viewing gallery options that the guests can choose from to view their car card on the source. Maybe they see one on land. Maybe they want to see one that's a bit more forested. And maybe they want to see one... That's by the water. It's their choice at the end of the day. Anyway, it's now time to actually build the interior of the enclosure. 
and we need the animals. So we're going to be getting some Carcardontosaurus going. We, we need a male and a female. Shockingly, we actually ended up with an albino variant, but I decided, you know, we already have so many albinos and leucistics and melanistics in the park. It would be a bit weird if we just kept getting more and more of them. So even though it was a true albino, I had to pass this one up. Anyway, we got one male, one female, and apparently the population is zero to one male and uh, one female. So apparently female Carcardon source attract the crowds, I think, or it is a better population. Now I'm just building up the little waterway they're going to be drinking from. And, you know, just making it deep, like the Carcardon source is one of those dinosaurs that uh, doesn't need that much water and it doesn't even have a minimum water depthness. But I decided, you know, make it a little bit deep. They can't swim in it. It's not that deep, but it is, you know, a place where they could cool down if they so chose. And of course, it's their main drinking source. I put down grass and sand and such, you know, to start working with the terrain and all that mess. And now I'm placing down a shelter with some hay, with this is of course where they're going to be sleep. And I put down some carnivore feeders for them to feed on. And I strategically placed them along where, you know, the guests would be able to see them. And of course, you can see what I mean about me having to work around this enclosure, trying to smooth out all those jagged edges around the path and around the fence. Because, oh my God, it is so unattractive to look at. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to see any of that. Like, it, it's absurd. I really need that flat tool uh, for paths. Please, Dev, please let it, let it, let it come to me. But anyway, once I more or less had it fixed, more or less, it was time to decorate the interior. And by doing so, that meant I had to follow the car card on the source around. So as you can see here, I'm just following both of them. Uh, and putting down some substrate wherever they go, except for around the sand, because that's already kind of like a low, grassy area. Well, well grassy, I say, I say that, but I mean an area with very low grass, or no grass whatsoever. And now I'm messing around with the terrain. I'm going to be putting down some rocky edges around, uh, as well as placing down a feeder. I put down a blood pump in there. You know, give them a little bit of enrichment. Again, looking forward to the day when we get toys for the dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. I mean, imagine a car car dinosaurs with something like a giant rubber tire or a mahoosive beach ball. That would be pretty cool. Although saying that, a beach ball would probably pop in its mouth. Oh well. Anyway, once again, I'm raising and smoothing out the terrain and, you know, putting some rock around to give it, you know, the look. See how it will look where where I put down the modular pieces, because rock uh, cliffs is basically my jam. I didn't want this to be like the other builds. I wanted to make this relatively flat. Like, I don't want it to be to the point where, you know, a car car dinosaur could walk down on it, except um, they still, they're still able to, but eh. The look I ended up with was pretty good. So I basically just made rocky outcrops in the water. And of course, I'm just now, you know, adding more water to cover up the unwanted blemishes. And also picking colors, you know, because I wanted to match the, the terrain in as best as I can. And I also play around with the uh, placement tools, like, you know, flipping it around and also um, turning it on its axis, that sort of thing. And that's the first rock wall done. Now it's time to move on to the second one. And this one I was a bit lazy with. I just struck one giant rock, put down some more water, and uh, copy and pasted uh, it from the bottom just so I could complete that. So, yeah, probably not my finest moment, but oh well, if I build, I get to do whatever I want with them. And it turned out looking nice in the end anyway. This is usually the rock that the car car dinosaurs use to get onto this, um, this little site here. 
And now we're just, you know, going around adding water where we can and also getting rid of the excess rock and putting down some water plants. Karkar on a source like wetlands, so I figured, you know, add some reeds along the edge of the rocks and stuff like that. And now we're going, we're trying to go about uh, trying to build the environment in the enclosure. And honestly, I was never happy with any of the choices I was given. It, it was either too populated with trees or there was just not enough variety. It was, it, I was very picky with this particular build. I know I wanted a tropical enclosure. That wasn't a doubt in my mind. Ultimately, I ended up, I ended up making a lot of changes to this enclosure. Like, look at this. Look at how dense that plant life is. It's too dense uh, for this enclosure. So, I take a break from it and, you know, build up the, the third and I think the final rock wall in this enclosure. And this here would just be another, you know, rocky cliff, but there would also be another blood pumpkin along the side. So, I play around with rocks, you know, stretch them. I uh, turn them on their axis, lower them, raise them, whatever I needed to do to get that done. Add some more water plants along the sides. And yeah. And of course, make some last minute changes to leveling and raising and things like that. And also, I go back and I think I make all the water plants and rock walls into one group. Don't ask me why, it's just something I chose to do. And I also go, you know, into the uh, actual viewing gallery to make sure all the rocks don't actually clip through the, um, the viewing gallery. I do eventually want to make a more natural looking gallery and such in the future. Maybe I'll save that for when I do Tyrannosaurus Rex eventually. Uh, so I haven't gotten a lot of questions about it, but I do want to say that I want to save stuff like Tyrannosaurus, uh, Triceratops, and Edmontosaurus, and Ecton specifically, for when we get a few more Hell Creek species. I know we're getting Ankylosaurus. That's coming in the next update. But I want to see if uh, Prehistoric Kingdom releases Pachycephalosaurus. I know Pranocephale was on the cards, but not Pachycephalosaurus. I'm assuming by now they probably changed their minds on that, so maybe Pachycephalosaurus will come to the game. I don't know for sure. This is what I'm theorizing. There's no confirmation at all. I'm hoping Pachycephalosaurus because it is my fa favorite herbivore. Well, I guess omnivore now because Pachycephalosaurus probably ate both. But still, I would like to see if Prehistoric Kingdom released Pachycephalosaurus because I want to build a sort of Hell Creek like section in the park and you know and I, but I need the main dinosaurs I need T-Rex I need Triceratops and Montosaurus and Kylosaurus and Pachycephalosaurus hopefully uh if not then I'm totally satisfied with just the big four um but really 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 hoping Pachycephalosaurus is in the future anyway I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna make this terrain look Good with all the plants and it's still very frustrating <laughs> to try to get it right nothing works for me I'm apparently very hard to please I liked where I was going initially though with this look where it was palm trees and jungle uh, ground and things like that I like this however the, the palm trees I feel like were a bit too dense like look at this it's a bit it's a bit weird to look at i don't like it so it's a step in the right direction but at the same time it's not what i really envisioned so i'm going back and deleting all of the excess palm trees i know at this point what i want to do I want a lot of jungle earth, jungle ground, and, you know, some other small plants. And then strategically place down palm trees and such to make, you know, to make the enclosure feel 
more spaced out. I mean, these are big animals, so they would make a lot of, they would need a lot of room to move about. So as you can see, I'm just now placing the jungle earth and whatever other low lying vegetation I have selected into the gaps where there are no paths. Once that's done, I begin experimenting with some of the other trees that are available. And at first they look okay, but then I take a second look and I'm like, uh, they don't look too good. I think I actually need the palm trees. So I place down the palm trees individually, you know, but still strategically. I am not too big of a fan of the bent palm trees. I prefer the ones that are short or tall, and but usually straight. But I do give in and eventually place some of the more bent ones because, you know, that they, they exist and they have to. Uh, interesting thing, when I went back through the save, uh, for some reason, the trees that were bent made a cluster and just came together. Anyway, I then add some kapok trees because, you know, I wanted some thicker uh, types of foliage around. To provide shade for the Kamakar dinosaurs. Now I'm adding, I think this is elephant ear palm or fern. I don't know what it's called. Um, next up, I go through and add some uh, ferns and palms and stuff like that, like on the ground, right along to where the paths would be to add just a little bit more dense foliage to where the pack. Uh, excuse me, not pack simple source. That's not in the game. Uh, Kamakar dinosaurs would be. And I really like how this turned out. Like the foliage looks really good. I placed down some more ferns just to add some more variety. And honestly, the way it looks like this now, it looks great. But we're not done just yet. While the interior of the enclosure is done, we still need viewing galleries and such. So I decided, well, viewing galleries, we needed information for the donation boxes. So I figured why not make the um, viewing galleries into you know, information board and stuff where, you know, the guests could learn about the dinosaurs along the way. But of course, that also meant I had to copy and paste all this into the other uh, versions of the build. I did try to put down a vending machine, but unfortunately, the vending machine was a bit too big. So I'll just save that for another time. And then it was back to copy and pasting all the viewing galleries back to where they were. So, you know, they actually look like the more updated build of it. And yeah, this was quite a tedious process trying to realign everything. This is why you should always um, build once and, and don't copy and paste twice. And I think for the last bit of this, I'm just going through and deleting any of the ferns or jungle ground that's actually poking up under the fence because we got to keep some semblance of realism in this. And there's really not much else to say. I just go around deleting plants where I think it's needed. And for once, I actually didn't record after this session. I actually managed to record the whole thing. All that's left to do now is just add some bumpiness to the terrain to make it seem natural and that's basically it so with all of that out of the way the Kakar dinosaurs enclosure is finally finally finished so let's finally take a look at this and here it is folks the Kakar dinosaurs enclosure which is actually kind of dwarfed by the spino enclosure but for some reason these two are totally okay with it and I guess I just wanted to make a big spino enclosure. But anyway, let's take a tour, shall we? So, let's explore the perimeter. And yes, I didn't make any changes to the enclosure off camera for once. Whatever, dude. Anyway, so why don't we take a tour? So, 
the guests have the option of coming through here, and as they do so, they have the ability to check on the Spinosaurus enclosure, which, you know, we, we did in the last episode. Then we also have this view over here where you can see our two Cacarodontosaurus, you know, just roaming about in this tropical plains sort of environment. Then you get to come through here along this path. Ratatata, ratatata. And then you get this this sort of bridge connecting to here. And it's completely unlevel with this thing, but oh well. I guess that is one minor change I am gonna have to make for this. But anyway, we guess can look here and view the car cards on the source from the safety of the glass. Very nice. They can come see them drink or just walk through. They can also see them eat from that blood pumpkin over there. There's another blood pumpkin strategic place over here, and I think this one is actually coming over to give us a demonstration. Yeah, look at that. How's that for a view? You're just walking through here, and you just see a cockeyed on source munching on a pumpkin. That's awesome. Oh, and I think the other one's coming over too. Awesome. Uh, and he's coming here for a drink. So yeah, this viewing uh, gallery is very effective. Ah, oh, they're very noisy animals, these guys. And then you can just walk around here. And then you have another viewing platform. This one is a bit more obscure, I guess. But you can still see the cockard on source from here. There's even a feeding platform there that they can feed from. And you can still see one of the carts over there is now actually eating the blood pumpkin. But then you would continue on through here. Shoop. And we have one more plat um, viewing plat uh, gallery here. With once again another feeding station here for them to feed from. And look at that. You can it's so cool, right? Being able to view these animals just through glass. I think I did pretty well with this observa observatory station. But now let's actually view the interior of the enclosure itself. So this build is mostly tropical, of course. We have a lot of jungle floor and stuff like that. But also palm trees and hawk trees and things like that. And of course these pads here, which were made by the cockard on the source that they use, um, although they still don't use these paths religiously. But they lead to water, they lead to the feeding stations, and of course, this one over here leads to their shelter. Which, you know, they can come, on, come here to, you know, escape the sun and things like that. Like, this one I think is about to demonstrate. Yeah, down you go, girl. And this is the female of, um, of the two because she's paler and her her crests aren't as bright red as the male. What was your name again? Um, Sakani. Now these guys will sometimes do a rolly animation. I wonder if we'll see her do it uh, here. I don't know. I've only ever seen them do it a couple times, but I'll admit I wasn't really pay, paying much attention to them. I was more concerned about the build. Oh, wait. Ah, nah, she's going to sleep. Well, that's okay. I don't think we've ever seen any of our dinosaurs sleep. You know what? It's okay. Because now it shows that, yeah, these dinosaurs do sleep. And where's our bull car card on the floor? Ah, there he is. There's the big boy. This is 
Balarebe. I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. He's the big boy. He's all brightly colored with the orange and blacks and that bright red head press. And he's also a bit bigger. And this is honestly really cool. I love the design for the Carcardontosaurus in this game. Really blows the one from Crossword Evolution 2 out of the water. In every, in every way. Oh, I want to see this from the viewing gallery. Let's let's try to get a cinematic shot of this. Yeah, look at that. Just imagine people coming through here and seeing something like that just walk in front of them. Oh, it's going to be so cool. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are some people that do come through here. It's just very few and far between at the moment. But yeah, that is the car card on the source enclosure. So, in the next build, we will be building an Aranosaurus enclosure, and we will be building it right around here. You, and once again, using this viewing gallery as a way for the guests to see the dinosaurs. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that when we do Aranosaurus. But for now, this is where we're going to end the video. If you enjoyed it and you look forward to more Prehistoric Kingdom speed builds, leave a like, subscribe today, hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything new. All my links are in the link tree in the description down below. And until next time, this is Tyrannosaurus by signing off. All right then, take care now. Bye-bye then.